Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Praise Jesus, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise the Jesus. Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Praise Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God Almighty. Glory be to God Almighty. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God Almighty. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Praise the Lord. Hello and welcome. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. <laughs> Praise God, praise God, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. Praise God. Amen. Hello and welcome. Benjamin John. I am Benjamin John. I welcome you and I thank you for joining us here at Living Hope Christian Center. Jesus is Lord and Christ over Living Hope Christian Center. The chance that you are here is a testament to the fact that God has ordained you to be a part of this meeting. Again, you are welcome. Here at Living Hope Christian Center, we believe that Jesus is Lord and Christ and He is the head of this assembly. And I am His servant. He has entrusted me as a custodian of His gospel for this particular house and I'm grateful to God. This is a vision that was given by God. There's no one that can fulfill God's vision by himself. So there's a path for everyone. This is a place of love, a place of hope, a refuge for anyone that has any issue or anyone that needs to maintain their peace and joy. At Living Hope Christian Center, it begins with Jesus and ends with Jesus. Jesus is Lord over this assembly. As you pray and meditate on your part for this commission, I want you to prayerfully consider being a part of this family with the great gifts that God has given you. God has given each and every one of us great gifts of one purpose to edify his body. And we are the body of Jesus Christ. I pray that Lord Jesus will appear to you and reveal himself to you via his word. Again, you are welcome. Thank you and God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. We give you praise, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Thank you for the privilege to have this broadcast again. Lord, you have done all things well. You are so good. You are so kind. 
You are so merciful. There is none like you. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' precious name. Again, I welcome you to this broadcast. Let us begin by praying. Shall we join our heads, bow our heads together in prayer? Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for this broadcast. We thank you for the privilege, O oh Lord, to come together and study the Bible at your feet. We pray that the word of God will proceed with power, with impact, unhindered by any demonic forces across the harvest field of the earth, O oh Lord, beginning from New Jersey. Father, we pray that salvation will be wrought in houses and families, O oh Lord, and that all of them souls for eternal life, that they will be saved today, O oh Lord, wherever they are in the journey of life, that Jesus will feel all things for them in the name of Jesus. We have declared this in righteousness and we have been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Before we begin, let me uh, first of all apologize for the first broadcast. It didn't occur to me that uh, we didn't have any audio. And uh, at the end of it, I saw some feedback from uh, some viewers that they did not receive audio. So that is why we are having a second broadcast. And I believe that the audio is very clear now. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Amen. Praise Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Now, before we let continue, let me just say this. It is a privilege that we are able to share the word of God together. I count it joy. All oh, joy in double honor. My name is Brother Benjamin. We're going to go straight into the world. Thank you for joining us that we're able to reach you and your family in your home. We really appreciate it. The Lord bless you. Amen. We will continue with our series, Advancing the Kingdom of God. Today is part 48. Advancing the Kingdom of God. Today is part 48. We have been on this for quite some time now. So for those of you who are joining for the first time or watching this broadcast or this video for the first time, I encourage you to... Also, after we finish this, this broadcast, after the service, that you should visit our earlier series, the introductory series, Advancing the Kingdom of God, but one through six. There, we talked about the introduction of the premier, so that when we say the kingdom of God, you'll be up to speed where we are. Praise the Lord. So today, we continue from where we stopped last week. Advancing the kingdom of God. We we'll begin by going through our anchor scriptures, our three anchor scriptures. Let's open our Bible to the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verses 28. Genesis, chapter 1, verse 28. And I read, And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. That is the will of God. So pay attention to that. Also, Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. Now the Lord has said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, and unto a land that I will show thee. I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, 
and make thy name great, and that shall be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in this shall all families of the earth be blessed. Amen. Also, our final anchor scripture this morning is taken from the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. <laughs> Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. And I read, the Bible says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. That is the will of God. Praise the Lord. We continue with this in our series of advancing the kingdom of God, part 48. Today we continue with the sub with the sub-series, the spirit of seeing and knowing, the privilege of seeing and knowing. So as we said last week in Deuteronomy chapter 34, let's go there quickly. It's good to read these scriptures and read them repeatedly. Let the Spirit enter into us. Deuteronomy chapter 34, verses 1 to 4. And I read, the Bible says, And Moses went up from the plains of Moab unto the mountain of Nebo to the top of Pisgah, that is over against Jericho. And the Lord showed him all the land of Gilead unto Dan. And Naphtali, and all Naphtali and the land of Ephraim, and Manasseh, and all the land of Judah, unto the utmost sea, and the south, and the plain of the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees, unto Zohar. And the Lord said unto him, This is the land which I swear unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, saying, I will give it unto thy seed. I have caused thee to see it with thy eyes, but thou shalt not go over it, Tita. Praise the Lord. The privilege of seeing and knowing. As we said last week, at Manibo, God will reveal to you things others will not see. You will know things others will not know. We said also last week that encounter with Jesus is the spiritual climbing of Mount Nebo. You see the way he sees it. Why? We said that this encounter only happened by the word. And we have been using the example of Joseph. We said in Joseph, for Joseph, he got a word. He got a word clearly via vision that the sun, the moon, and the 11 stars will bow down before him. And because of that, the word of the Lord tried him. The vision was too big for his family to handle. He was rejected, ostracized, and banished by his brothers. And the Bible says in Psalm 105, which we also studied last week, beginning from verse 19, that until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. Joseph faced some tempest of life. The king sent and loosed him. Pharaoh sent and loosed him. He was loosed by God, not by Pharaoh, because he was the solution to his problem, because he was mindful of the heavenly vision. No man can help God. Even the ruler of the people and let him go free. Joseph is free man. He made him lord of his house. Joseph became the prime minister. And ruler of all his substance, he became the finance minister and the minister of productivity. To bind his princes at his pleasure, he became the justice minister also and teach his senators wisdom. Joseph became the senate president. Just like he received a heavenly vision. Everything came to pass by the word of God, as God has spoken. And as God has spoken to you, everything that God has told you will come to pass in your life. 
So the outcome of the sent word to Joseph was fulfilled. At Mount Nebo, you see the way he sees it. Why? Because in John chapter 14, verse 6, John chapter 14, verse 6, the Bible says, and I read, John chapter 14, verse 6. And I read, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So, encounter with Jesus is the spiritual climbing of my neighbor. And that comes by the word, when you study the word of God. As you have the encounter with Jesus via his word, you will see the way he sees it. You will see the way out of your circumstance, out of your contradiction that are surrounding you. It's not yours. That is by, by the kingdom of darkness. So you will see the way that he sees it. Your dominion over those things. And you will see the truth because he sees the truth and he will show it to you. And in it is life. You will see life. All by the word. Joseph received all of this. And yet affliction came for the world's sake. Encounter with Jesus is still happening today by divine privilege. Is the privilege, is the sovereignty of God to reveal himself to you in Christ Jesus. For example, as a New Testament believer, what does it mean for, means for you? As you study the Bible, you begin to change level from level to level via encounters, series of encounters. For example, John. John the Baptist. I mean, you see, it's so vivid, so astonishing, so clear that you are not in any doubt. You know in whom you have believed. Regardless of what happened out there, the tempest, the, 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 the bombardment of negative images, all manner of things as you sleep, it doesn't mean anything. In fact, it's laughable because you know in whom you have believed. Because God has reproduced himself in you, his authority and dominion, and the blessing is at work in you. Why? Because God has ordained before the foundation of the earth that because he called you, that you must work in the assignment that he has called you into. So pay attention to this. Today, these encounters with Jesus continues. For example, in Revelation chapter 21, verse 10, let's go there quickly. In Revelation 21, verse 10, John speaking says, Apostle John, and he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain. You see, encounter with Jesus is the spiritual climbing of Mount Nebo. Jesus, by the encounter, by the encounter that John had with Jesus, he was carried away by, by the spirit into a very high mountain. And there, the Lord showed him the great city, the holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God. John was in the spirit on the last day and had an encounter with Jesus. And he saw things that no man can ever see, will ever see. And he know things, he heard things that no man can ever hear and know things that no man can ever know. And by privilege, he put it in the book of Revelation, all of those things that are permitted by God for him to write down. Others do not write, and he didn't write those words. Encounter at Mount Nebo. That is where you see things that no man can see. And you hear things that no man can hear. And you see it's so vivid. You know in whom you have believed. Unshakable, immovable. Like, like Joseph. Praise the Lord. John saw the end of this world as we know it. And the beginning of the heavenly Jerusalem coming down on earth the next word by divine privilege. It pleased God to give him that account, encounter. This spiritual climbing of Manibo is via encounter with Jesus. 
you see things that no man can see. You know things that no man can know. You know how the matter will end. It is the sovereignty of God. He will choose to reveal things, to do his truth. And that is it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Encounter with Jesus changes the way you see. It changes the way you see things. You begin to walk and see love and compassion. You see, in the book of Job, chapter 22, verse 29, let's go there quickly. The book of Job, chapter 22, verse 29, Job 22, verse 29. The Bible said, when men are cast down, then thou shalt say there is lifting up, and it shall save the humble person. You see, men cast John down to Patmos. Try to cast him down to Patmos. All because of the world's sake. And they thought they got him. But that was the greatest lifting he has ever received. And then he was able to have an encounter on the last day while he was in Patmos, the island, where he was cast away. On the last day, he received an encounter via the world. Jesus, he was in the spirit on the last day. And then that was 65 years later, the Lord, 65 years later in glory, he saw Jesus. Amen. He saw the awesome glory of the Almighty God. He couldn't recognize, but he heard a voice and he understood the voice because 65 years in glory of he that ever lived, that is alive and is living in you. Praise the Lord. What an awesome privilege. And John saw things, encounter with Jesus, the spiritual climbing of my neighbor. And John wrote those things. Look at the lifting up, telling us things to come. So when men are saying there's a uh, casting down, you are saying there's a lifting up because God has taken you to a place where you see things as he sees it. And no man, no woman, no power can take that from you. Praise the Lord. That is where you want to be. That's the relationship you need to guard. Anything that interferes with that relationship, you have to cut it off. It's not welcome in your life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. They thought they got <laughs> Apostle John. But look at what happened. And Jesus gave a warning to us about these matters. What it means. Let's open our Bible to the book of Luke, chapter 7, verse 27 to 30. Luke, chapter 7, verse 27 to 13. And I read. Luke, chapter 7, beginning from verse 27 to 30. The Bible say, this is he of whom it is written. Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. For I say unto you, among those that are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. But he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. And all the people that heard him and all the publicans justify God being baptized with the baptism of John. But the Pharisees and the lawyers rejected the counsel of God against themselves, being not baptized with him. Praise the Lord. This is what happened when people despise the vision of God that you have received. Some people say that you can't amount unto anything, and they reject you and turn you away. Jesus is warning here in this scripture that anyone who opposes your God-given assignment, not your own assignment, your God-given assignment, your vision that God has given you, Anyone who opposes your God-given assignment have nullified for themselves God's plan. Jesus has taught us how the Pharisees, the Sadducees, rejected John the Baptist by not lead, by not letting themselves be immersed by him in water baptism, acknowledging that God was right. The result was that their heart was not softened, and so the Messiah came. 
and they nullify themselves from God's plan. The Messiah was there, Yeshua, the Messiah of God, daily in their temples. He preached, they saw signs, they saw wonders. They saw the awesome power of God, the manifestation of the power of God. They didn't believe. The kingdom was being established right there and then. And they were the officials, you know, the Queen Haggadah, the high priest, all the Torah teachers, all the Pharisees, the scribes, the Sadducees, they didn't believe. And so they nullified themselves for God's plan. But thank God for Jesus, because he is God and he is love and compassion. And compassion, who is love, dwell in you. So compassion was working in the life of Joseph, and so should work in your life in love. Praise the Lord. Because God, who is love, who is compassion, that do not in you, never fails. And so you cannot fail. You see, anyone who opposes the plan that God has given you, they have nullified themselves from God's plan. Praise the Lord. Regardless of where they are in the journey of life and how big they think they have arrived, God is no respecter of anyone. Praise the Lord. But thank God for Jesus, who is love and compassion. Israel will be saved. How do I know? Let's open to the, to the, uh, back to the book of Zechariah. Zechariah. Chapter 12, verse 10. The Bible says, and I read, And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplication, and they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son. And shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. That is the plan of God for the redemption of Israel. They shall look upon him in whom they have pierced. He will save Israel. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So what does that mean for you as a believer now? All of this happened to Joseph who dared believe God's given vision. His family rejected him. The vision was too big for them to handle, to fathom. While he was cast down in the pit by his brothers, God already sent messengers ahead for his lifting up. The merchant man, God is saying your lifting has come. Regardless of the contradictions that are surrounding you right now. Now let me ask you this. Think about these things. Meditate on this. Do you think that it is a coincidence that the merchant men who have been traveling for months on camels and donkeys just happened to arrive at that particular time in the exact same hour, minute and second that Joseph brother threw him in the pit? <laughs> Israel, Jacob, is the one with the promise. But since they rejected God's vision given to Joseph, they nullify themselves from God's plan. So God's power was magnified through Joseph in a hidden nation where that vision was received for the glory of God and the, and the heavenly vision that Joseph received became a blessing to Egypt, a hidden nation. And through Joseph, that nation was used to save the world from starvation. So if you are, if you are being maltreated, rejected, God has a place where your message will be received. Praise the Lord. And that is not the end of the story because Jesus is compassion and he is love. And that was working in the life of Joseph and should work in your life. Look at this picture. Joseph had authority, power, and dominion to destroy his brothers and all his enemies. But compassion and have take, compassion and love took over Joseph and he saved his brethren and the nation Israel from hunger and starvation. Because when they came to buy, when they, when they bought sack, lack, stagnation, stagnation, stagnation to buy grains from Egypt, Joseph, in his royal apple, recognized them, and they did not. He had the power to cast them into prison and destroy them, but he did not. 
because he had compassion and love at work in him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What am I saying? This is the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God that they write you out. They say you don't amount to anything because you are just beginning. They forgot how they started and how, how God has empowered them. Suddenly, it's about them and not about Jesus anymore. So the gospel should end with them. The, 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 the Bible says that the increase of his government has no end. God has separated you so that you can begin the expansion of his kingdom. Like he did the other, but you can't do it. Hear me and hear me clearly. Let love and compassion overwhelm you. Pray for them. Don't be, don't be upset. Don't be mad. Don't be angry. Vengeance and recompense belong to God. Pray for them. Repent if you have ought against them. And then receive your forgiveness if they, anyone have ought against you. And pray that they be saved. Because if they don't, the covenant is there to protect you as we shall see. It will kick in. You see that Joseph has been promoted above all those who have afflicted him because of the heavenly vision. This is the wisdom of God. As it's written in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21 to 29. Let's see. The wisdom of God at work. Praise the Lord. Let's see. The Bible say, and I read, For after that, in the wisdom of God, the word by wisdom knew not God. It is God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified. Unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called, and that is you and me, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God had chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God had chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And best things of the world and things which are despised had God chosen. Yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh will glory in his presence. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You see that? Hear me clearly. If you have been despised, if people have raised up venomous utterances against you because you dare believe God, the heavenly vision to serve God, don't be offended. It's the wisdom of God. God will use you to save their life. And if they don't repent, then the covenant will protect you and we know their end. Praise the Lord. You see, the, somebody say, who are you? Dear to receive the vision of God. Look at you. A non-entity. Who know you? You are not recognized. That's okay. God has ordained that you will walk in that assembly before the foundation of the earth. That is why he has called you. So you will walk in that which God said you are going to walk in because you are only mindful of the heavenly vision. As we have just read here, you can see clearly God does not call the qualified. He qualifies the called. All those who are now in authority, who say they are right, they are archbishops, and they have become spiritual colossus, and they are afflicting innocent believers and those who they answer the word of God. Today, when you hear this word that is being shared, salvation has come. Repent, because it's not the will of God that you should perish, regardless of your title. Relationship with Jesus is what matters. Do not hinder the advancement of the, con of, the, uh, of the kingdom of God and making it as if the kingdom of God must end with you. You are just a creature of God. You are trying to fight against God, to hinder the work of God. And God has a reward for such people. But it is not his way that any should perish. That includes you. Repent. 
And he said, Brother Ben, I don't know Jesus. Oh, that, that's good. Today is your day. As you are hearing this word, again, turn to God, repent and be converted. Return to Jesus. And he will save you and your family. Praise the Lord. No flesh will glory in his presence. Let's see how this matter will end. Luke chapter 7, verse 35. Luke chapter 7, verse 35. Luke 7, verse 35. The Bible says, and I read, that wisdom is justified of her children. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Did you see that? Wisdom is justified of her children. That is, wisdom is justified of her children. The proof of wisdom is in all the kinds of people it produces. That's what that Bible is saying. The proof of wisdom is in all the kind of people it produces. Maybe you have been afflicted because you answered the call of God. How dare you answer the call of God? Instead of you to join us and remain here and serve us. That has that been your story. The proof of the wisdom of God is in the kinds of children wisdom has produced. You can imagine the spectacle, Joseph, this dreamer. How dare you cast out, banished, presumed dead. Can you imagine the spectacle when Joseph revealed himself to his brothers, the awe, the astonishment, the regret, the fear. And now watch this. Love and compassion, which is in Christ Jesus, dwell in Joseph. The forgiveness. Hi. The forgiveness. And all of that turned into joy unspeakable for his brethren. Look at what the word of God has produced in Joseph's life. Look at that Joseph, the dreamer, a non-entity. How dare you? Now Joseph in authority, in the fullness of the power of God, which is his dominion and his authority, he saved Pharaoh. He saved the nation of Egypt and he used that nation to save the world and the nation of Israel. They were cut off from God's plan. Now Joseph, because of compassion and love, have now brought them back and they are now accepted. And he brought them back, praise the Lord. Nothing missing as God has spoken to him. The sun, the moon, and the 11 stars will bow down before you. The 11 brothers bowing down for him. And they knew him, they knew him not. Imagine the spectacle. Why? Because the Bible says in Luke chapter 7, verse 35, that wisdom is justified of our children. That is, the proof of wisdom of God in, is, 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 is in all the kinds of people it produces. So, if you are being despised, if people are using venomous language against you because you answer the call of God, operate in love and compassion. Focus on the heavenly vision because the proof of that calling, the wisdom of God is justified of who you have become in him. Remember that the church is not a beauty. It's not a popularity. It's not, an, it's not a court of personality. It's relationship with Jesus. It's not building. Otherwise, throughout this pandemic, there will be no church because the, the churches, are, the, the houses are closed. But the word of God is not held bound. It keeps expanding even as we speak. Because God, the word, his word cannot be held bound. And this word lives in you. So you are the sprinkled church in his blood. Praise the Lord. Please meditate on these things. This is who you are in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. But what does this, what does this mean for a believer? All this happened for fear in Joseph's life. By encounter with the word. Until his word came, the word actually came. Your word has come. All of these blessings, his fullness, authority, 
dominion and blessing is in Christ Jesus for you as a believer. Regardless of the tempest of life you are facing, the contradictions, all the mocking, even how people just for no reason rejected you and ostracized you, they have done you a favor. Your lifting has come as they were casting you down. There's a lifting up because now you have run to God and God has given you a series of encounters via the word. You have changed several times, series of encounters, and you have seen things that no man can see and know things that they don't know. Praise the Lord. That is the encounter with Jesus, this jack climbing of my neighbor. Praise the Lord. Here is the best part. Regardless of all of this, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 8. Let's go there. The Bible says, no, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 6. The Bible says, to the praise of the glory of his grace, where he had made us accepted in the beloved. You have been accepted in the beloved. God has accepted you in the beloved. You have been accepted in the beloved. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You have been accepted in the beloved. The almighty God of the English of his government, there's no end, has accepted you are in him. What does that mean? Regardless of the tempest of life that you face, regardless of the obstacles, you are accepted in him and you are in him. And this is what it means to all those contradictions. Acts chapter 5, verse 39. Acts chapter 5, verse 39. The Bible says, and I read, but if, but if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it. Let's happily ye be found able to fight against God. Before the foundation of the earth, God has ordained that Joseph will be prime minister of Egypt and that he will expand the kingdom of God and that he will walk according to the heavenly vision that he received. Before the foundation of the earth, of the world, God has ordained that you will walk in the assignment that he has ordained for you and that the world that he has sent you, that you will walk in it regardless, regardless of any opposition from anyone. No kingdom of darkness can stand it because the covenant is there. You are now walking in the covenants of promise. You see, the Bible is very clear. If they oppose you, they are opposing God. And when they oppose God, they can't overthrow God. They will be cut off from God's plan for their life. This is the scripture. Meditate on these things. Make God bigger than the circumstances that surround you. This is what is happening. Hallelujah. The heavenly vision. Joseph overcame because anyone who fights him is fighting the God that sent him. You can imagine that God promoted him and elevated him above all those who opposed him. Encounter with Jesus. You keep changing levels. And the people who oppose you, you look at them from the top where you are. You just laugh. Because they don't see what you see. And they don't know what you know. I mean, encounter with Jesus is so vivid, is so clear, all struck, so that according to the scripture, you know in whom you have believed. There is no doubt that you know in whom you have believed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This is not a small matter. It's a divine privilege. Hold on to that heavenly vision. That is the place you want to be. Guide that relationship jealously. Praise the Lord. All these texts can only deepen, strengthen your God-given vision. You are unshakable in the Lord like Joseph. God-given vision is spiritual. It is not dependent on gifts, natural talent, or education. No man can give it to you, and no man 
can take it from you. Never. Praise the Lord. In closing, in the series of closing, wherever you go, whatever you do, you will manifest the love of God and the compassion of Jesus, just like Joseph did. Because God lives in you. His compassion is in you. For the, for the compassion of God that lives in you, you will manifest his love. Because love is in you. Love never fails. And God, who is love, dwells in you. Here is the conclusion of this matter. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13. The Bible says, and I read, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be made able to withstand in the evil day, and have it done unto stand. There is evil. But remember that you have put on the garment of righteousness, the armor of righteousness. You have been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You are always continually in his presence. And the armor of God surrounds you. So you encourage yourself. You are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, not in your power. In the power of his might, the greater one that dwells in you. Praise the Lord, the kingdom of God that can clear anything on this way. Where is the Christian empire? Where is the Roman empire? Where is the Persian empire? All gone. The kingdom of God. Where is the Babylonian empire? The kingdom of God. Smashed all of them. Those are nations. I mean, can any man stand the kingdom of God? That man will be granted to the powder. But remember, you must walk in love. Pray for their forgiveness. Like Joseph, he accepted his brothers, forgive them because of love and compassion. And if they choose not to repent, the covenant is clear. They are fighting against God. And whatever they see from the hand of God has nothing to do with you. That is their problem. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Again, having done all, that's what the Bible says, stand. You will be the man standing. You see? <laughs> Look at that. All the people that will put Joseph at the end, Joseph is a man standing tall above all of them. In the earthly ministry of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, because they opposed the counsel of God, they were cut off for God's plan. See how all of them ended. And he that liveth forever looked down from heaven and just smiled. All those who opposed Paul, Paul prayed for them. And if they are repentant, see how they all ended. The Bible is threaded with these examples from Genesis to Revelation. So, identify yourself in the scripture. Praise the Lord. You will be the one standing in the end. That is the conclusion of this matter. Because no one can oppose God. Every venomous utterance issued against you, God has speedily blotted it out. And if they do not stop, as the altar is reversed upon their head, this day, this scripture is for free because the covenant cannot be broken. God can never abandon his covenant. God is the one that protects his call. So, hear me and hear me clearly. When God gives you a heavenly vision, when God calls you and gives you an assignment, whatever it is in whatever area of life, as you obey that heavenly vision, Nobody can touch you, no matter how they try. They can't touch you. And God is, before God, all things lay bare. They have had the opportunity to repent. If they choose not, it's unfortunate. That is the part they have chosen. So no one can touch you. No one can touch Jesus, Joseph. He was untouchable, unkillable, unmolestable, because compassion and love works in him. And that same compassion and love is working in you because Jesus, that ever liveth forever, who appeared to Apostle John in glory after 65 years in glory, he lives in you. As you have encounters with him by the word, as you change levels and levels daily, I mean, you just pray for God 
Lord, have mercy upon these people. That's what you do. Praise the Lord. But then the Bible was also very clear. Oh God, to whom vengeance belongeth, show thyself. You see, if you don't repent, that is what happens because the covenant can never be broken. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, having done all, you will be the man left standing because God is with you, just like He was with you. How do I know? How do I know? Let's see. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9. And I read, the Bible says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us, Lord, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. This is the will of God. That all those who have opposed you out of their ego, out of their image, they have forgotten how they started, how that God chose them, and from nothing God raised them. Suddenly now they, they magnify their own image above the word of God, above God. They come to you in all kinds of un, unwanted dreams, trying to confuse you to paint bad things, speed projection, so that you are confused in your heart of what God is saying. Forgive them. Pray for their forgiveness. Because it's not the will of God that they should perish, that they change from their wicked way. Just like Joseph, forgive them. Praise the Lord. But if they don't repent, they have nullified themselves from God's plan, regardless of their title or wherever they are right now. Because Saul thought that he was all or all that not knowing that the Spirit of God has left him. He was trying to rule with authority, but with power, but there's no authority. The Spirit of God has left him. Samson thought he was all that, not knowing that the Spirit of God has left him. Some people have allowed the Spirit of religion to enter into them, and they have done wicked things to unsuspecting innocent believer who, who used to trust what they say. But hear me. If you have been a victim, don't be bitter. Pray that God save them. That God, who does not want anyone to perish, that they be saved. That for the sake of the what they have done before, before they, 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 they became Balaam, that God should have compassion, look down from heaven and touch their heart and set their path right again. Praise the Lord. And if you have been challenged during this season and you have missed God, it's time to come back to God. Praise the Lord. How do I know? Because God will perform that which he says concerning you. And if you are one of these, a challenged Christian, you have not known Jesus before, there is a way of escape for you, even as you hear this word today. Because the Bible speaking in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2 says, and I pray, for he said, I have had thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. As you hear this word, harden not your heart. If you say you are a archbishop, you are the overseer, and you have done a egregious art in the name of preserving your enterprise, and you have left Jesus. You have hurt innocent people and let people astray, and some have lost their life in the process. God is saying, This is the day for your repentance. Be humble and come back to God, and God will restore you to what it used to be, the relationship you used to have with Him. If you have been challenged during this pandemic and because of circumstances, you have magnified your contradiction more than the God that is in your heart, and you have lost the faith. God is saying, it's time to come back. For the grace that brings us salvation has appeared to all, and that includes you. Now it's time to come back and rededicate your life to Christ. And if you're saying, Brother Ben, I have never been to church my whole life. I don't have a Bible. I don't know Jesus. Good. You have, at least you have been very sincere. You have just confessed him. It's the Spirit of God that enables you to say that today is the day of salvation. So as you hear this word, harden not your heart. Salvation will appear to you, will appear to your household, 
and your family. Praise the Lord. So that God's plan for your life cannot be nullified. It's not nullified. And if you receive and believe this, shout a big hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Now, shall you join me together? Let's just pray. And say after me. Repeat after me. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe that he came and died for me on the third day he rose again. Jesus is Mashiach of God, Son of David. Lord Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Please come into my life and be Lord over my life. I ask you to give me the gift of the Holy Spirit. I believe I'm restored back to God. I'm seeing life today, oh Lord. Thank you, Father, I'm born again. In Jesus' precious name, amen. <laughs> now, if you have prayed that prayer, whether you are a bishop or you are an archbishop or you are an overseer, God has no respect for titles. God only cares about relationship. Where you have missed it, you have just been restored. Praise God for his compassion and love that dwells in Christ Jesus that dwells in all that was in Joseph. You are now accepted back in the beloved. And if you have lost the faith because of circumstances, you have now been restored. And God is now bigger than your circumstances. And if you just give your life to Christ for the first time, great news. You are in. Praise the Lord. You are in and what's in? You are in. Praise the Lord. If you just give a letter to Christ, to Christ, I encourage you to find a Bible-believing church in your neighborhood and join. And tell the man of God that you just give a letter to Christ and that you need to be baptized so that they will give you water baptism. Also, I encourage you to write to us the address is on the screen, newbert at lhwar.org. Newbert at lhwar.org. We will save you materials that will encourage you in your Christian faith. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. If you also like to volunteer and find a way you can be a part of this movement, write to us also as newbert, newbert at lhwar.org. That org. Also, we have currently some training that is going for that is going on. We have uh, put together some data analytics training, data analytics training, so you can use it across any kind of area where you can now have immediate applicable skills and can work from any country and wherever you are, from any home. If you want to hear more about this, email us info at starting.net or text us as plus one seven three two five nine five eight nine seven four. Praise the Lord. Now, if you are being blessed through our series in this broadcast, then take a moment to give. This is the will of God that those who minister in spiritual things should also receive of your carnal things. And that is your financial giving. There are three ways you can give. You can give via pay PayPal. You can also give through Cash App or visit our website and give. These are the three ways in which you can give. Now let us pray as you prepare your giving. Almighty Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you for the giving grace. Thank you for your word that has gone forth, O Lord. Father, all those who, have, who are giving, all those who are proposing their heart to give, oh Lord, Father, we pray that they receive a hundredfold reward. Turn their giving into a seed in your hand, in their hand and multiply the seed, oh Lord. Oh, we pray they will be at the right place at the right time with the right people, doing the right thing all of the time in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we give you praise. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, Amen. Now, as you 
as you prepare to give, we will take a worship song and then we will worship God. We will worship God. We will worship God as you give, do your giving. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you for your giving. Thank you for your giving. We hope and believe that you have been blessed by the word of God today. And if you have been blessed, sow this teaching forward. This is your kingdom assignment. And watch the hand of God upon your life. Sow this teaching forward. Return every Thursday and every Sunday. Thursday at 5 p.m. and Sunday at 9 a.m. to be part of this community, this movement. Invite your friends, your family, your community, your colleagues to join this movement. This is the world today. A beacon of light for a hot and world brought to you by Living Hope Christian Center. My name is Brother Ben. It's been my privilege and joy, double honor, to be able to share the word of God with you today. We are glad that we are able to reach you in your living rooms, you and your household. To God be the glory. He has done all things well. The Lord God bless thee. The Lord keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. The Lord put his mighty name upon you. You are named by the name of God in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Shout a big amen. Please be fruitful in this community. Your voluntary begins by spreading the word. Share this. Invite your friends to this community. Visit us online and share the word. So forward and watch the kingdom of God unleash upon your life the power of the kingdom. Praise the Lord. Let's share the goodness, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, 
the true fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, the Lord's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall do it in the house of the Lord forever and ever. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Shalom.